Hello, uh, I'm audible. So uh, I'm going to talk about uh, NFC, near field communications, and what are the things uh, we can do with it. So first of all, a little bit of uh, details about NFC. Like NFC is uh, near field communications. It's a very short wireless uh, signal. It uses uh, modulated uh, electrical waves uh, for uh, transferring our data and uh, like uh, I think you all have experienced NFC right outside uh, all the sponsors in the check-in desks you can just uh, tap your card using NFC counter so that's one of the way places where you are able to use NFC it's being used in uh, payments obviously where everybody is using it it's used in social media check-ins hotel check-ins and a lot of other things so uh, I'll quickly run through a bit of history first uh, so here's uh, how NFC uh, has come where it is today. 2004, Nokia, Philips, and Sony uh, started working on it. 2006, the first phone with the NFC came up. And uh, like you see, in 2011, uh, Google in, at their I.O., they presented something about NFC, how to NFC, and that's when really NFC started uh, coming up big on Android. And uh, finally, Apple is also in the bandwagon from 2014. So I will uh, first uh, mention what are the positives we have about NFC. So as you can see, first of all, pairing is not required. So this is something interesting about a communication channel where I guess you all know about there is uh, Bluetooth or wi Wi-Fi where you need some kind of authentication. You need a user input for pairing the devices. Uh, NFC is one where inherently that pairing is not needed because of the proximity. You know that they are physically close to each other. Uh, it's uh, versatile, you can have uh, NFC readers or NFC cards in various formats. You can have NFC readers standalone on a laptop, on a mobile device, on a tablet. Uh, minimal power usage because uh, the NFC generally when it is not being used, it's not uh, requiring any energy at all. So uh, again, another uh, positive. Uh, user interaction, like I said, uh, you don't need to interact a lot. I mean, there are a lot of uh, ticketing facilities and hotel check-ins where all you need to do is actually tap. You don't need to interact with the screen on your device at all. So all these things leads to a very seamless procedure. Uh, obviously, if there are pros, there will be some cons. So one of the biggest uh, cons of NFC is it has compatibility issues because NFC, where it is today, has come uh, via, via various uh, different companies funding it, sponsoring it. So. At different points of time, different people have uh, l uh, have led the development. So there is RFID, there are a lot of different protocols in NFC and not a lot of things are compatible with each other. The speed is very slow uh, for a practical usage, like if you do device-to-device uh, -device, uh, data transfer or NFC, we can practically get around 10 kbps data transfer speed, which is comparable to something like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi is a uh, very slow speed. Uh, also, the network channel itself is uh, just a raw channel where you are sending bytes on it. So any kind of encapsulation you have to do for security needs that you want to do, uh, that the communication channel itself is not going to provide to you. So that's something you have to add at uh, the developer's level where you're going to uh, make a creator implementation. And due to the same reason, uh, there is no error control or flow control on it. So even your simple acknowledgement commands and uh, the not acknowledged commands, that also you have to device out yourself because the channel is just a raw stream of bytes. So uh, when we talk about NFC on Android, here are the things that we can actually do with NFC on Android as of now. Uh, we can read NFC tags or cards uh, like uh, a lot of you will have uh, credit cards or uh, like I'm from Delhi, so our metro cards are also NFC enabled. So all these things, uh, your uh, Android device can read these kind of cards. That's one uh, facility. You can use your mobile as a wallet. Uh, most of the phones have an inbuilt secure element. So in India, Google Wallet is not all that prevalent, but outside, a lot of people use uh, Google Wallet and it's uh, really widespread. Uh, we can beam data from one mobile to another. 
uh, I think that's something that uh, a lot of you might have tried already. You tap your mobile. So you, for sending something like contacts, I feel it is uh, very helpful. You can just tap your mobile to friend's mobile, beam the contact to him. Uh, then uh, two of the more interesting things uh, we have recently after Android KitKat is you can emulate a card. Basically, your device can work as a card. Like if you have uh, the kind of things I mentioned, library cards or metro cards or credit cards, these are all NFC tags. So your device can work as such a card. Uh, which is uh, a completely software-based emulation, so we call it host-based card emulation. And uh, regarding that, we also have a reader mode, uh, which also has been introduced in Android KitKat. So uh, this is basically a diagram that you can have a quick look. Uh, this is how the NFC software is uh, uh, implemented in Android. Uh, there is the Java layer, and then there is the libNFC controller, which is at the C layer. And your apps uh, are directly uh, conversing basically with the NFC adapter layer. Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, let's talk about how you uh, discover tags. So uh, basically in your uh, Android device, uh, these are the three intents that you can use as intent filters. So if your uh, NFC tag has a properly formatted NDF message on it, so this is the first uh, intent that you can catch. In case this intent you are not catching, uh, the action NDF discovered, or if your card does not have a properly formatted NDF message, just a couple of slides later I'm going to show what an NDF message looks like, uh, it falls back to this. And finally, if your card does not have any data or the data is not properly transferred, you at least get this intent, which is a tag discovered. At least you know that you have tapped into something. You don't get any other data other than that. So these are the three intents that you can use. Uh, is a flow diagram that you can see like if there is an NDF formatted tag, NDF discovered and it goes finally to the activity. Uh, if it is an unmapped tag, then via tag discovered it can go and finally if uh, none of these are caught, then you can get a tag discovered command and uh, you can move on to your activity and start using the NFC data. Uh, so a bit of example code. Uh, which shows uh, this is a very simple code that you can create uh, this kind of uh, an app like this and if somebody else taps onto your mobile uh, they will go into another uh, website so if you have a NFC ca card somewhere uh, the NFC uh, tag somewhere and that app is installed you tap onto it that app opens and that app takes you to the developer.android.com website for example uh, this is the format of the NDF message, uh, like I was saying. So uh, an NDF message contains records, and each record has a header and a payload. So if it is formatted in this manner, then it is the easiest way to work on Android using an NDF format. Uh, now we'll move on to uh, beaming, uh, the second way that uh, this was introduced in uh, Android uh, ICS 4.0. So uh, beaming, as we all know, we can tap devices, we can send data from one to another. Uh, this uses uh, SNEP, which is simple NDF exchange protocol. Basically, your data is sent in format of an NDF message. The only thing is this is unidirectional in nature. When you tap, uh, during one tap, you just can send data from either from A to B or from B to A. If you want to send uh, any data back, you have to remove the devices, tap them back again. Uh, in 4.1, something very interesting happened. Uh, a layer was added, what it does is uh, you cannot send a lot of data at 10 kbps speed. You cannot send images, videos, or audio, stuff like that. So uh, what uh, Android provided was if the data is bigger than a certain set limit, which is usually 64 kb, uh, so what it does is it pairs the two devices via a secondary channel, which is like, say, Bluetooth. Uh, for Android Beam, Samsung has a S Beam protocol which uses Wi-Fi Direct. Uh, as a developer, we can implement some other uh, secondary channel which is faster than uh, NFC. So the pairing data is shared by NFC. The devices get paired, and the actual data gets transferred via the secondary channel. Uh, then we come to the final thing: what NFC very recently has started allowing us on Android is uh, the host-based card emulation. So this was uh, coined by Simply Tap in 2011, and uh, Cyanogen Mod and Simply Tap had a partnership, and they tried to bring host-based card emulation. Finally, in Android 4.4, uh, uh, Google has brought official host-based card emulation. 
So, uh, you know, I will just uh, show what the difference is. So, this is what happens in a device that uh, is older than, say, Android KitKat, which did not have host-based card, host card emulation on it. So, uh, when your NFC reader, uh, the, that white part is your device, this is your reader, when it tries to read, your data is directly sent to the secure element. So your device uh, always has that same ID, which we get back from the secure element. There isn't a lot of documentation about the secure element. Uh, so you can use your mobile only as one kind of a card, like your Google Wallet card as it had been uh, in practice. What uh, host-based card emulation does is it allows you to, uh, you, it allows your device to act as many different cards by different applications. So you, you are not always forcefully redirected to use the secure element present in your phone. Your app can behave as a card. It can have its own security protocols. It can have its own ID. So as you can see, uh, there is, I think uh, this one visible, it says select AID X, and that says select AID Y. So depending on AID, AID is basically the ID that your reader sends out what kind of card it wants to read. Depending on that, your NFC controller will either uh, send data from the emulated emulating app or it will use the secure element. So uh, here is a kind of an example system that using uh, uh, software-based HCE, what we can do is the security we can move to the, the bank can use its own security layer in the cloud and not require to use a secure element that's present on your device. So you can use the same device as a Visa card and also as a MasterCard uh, card because uh, they will all have their uh, security implementation, their AID implementation, all of that, the software will handle it. So in host-based card emulation, uh, the data is transferred not via NDEF messages. Instead, uh, each packet is called an APDU. Uh, an APDU is at least 256 byte in size, which is always. In some certain uh, NFC chips, uh, they support something that's called an extended, uh, extended length APDU, which is 64 KB in size. Uh, as a rule of thumb, you can say the NXP522 or the 532 uh, chips made by NXP Semiconductor, they don't have uh, this extended length APDU supported as of now. Uh, other than that, most other NFC chips do support uh, 64 KB size packets. So uh, these are some of the example commands that you can send. The reader can send this kind of commands, so select AID or put AID. So using these commands, it can get the data. So I'll just show how this works. So for example, this is your reader device and your card device. When they come close to each other, uh, on tag discovered callback is generated on your reader. Uh, when you get the on tag discovered callback, uh, so inside the implementation of your on tag discovered, you will have to send the select AID command. Uh, so when you do the select AID command, uh, your card will, uh, the device that is behaving as a card will reply back with a certain uh, ID, which you have set already inside that app. And then after that, you can uh, start doing a lot of uh, get data and put data calls. So get data is going to fetch data with put data, you can change the data that's already in the card. And all of this, the card itself on the reader device is just a software stack. So you can have a card with unlimited amount of data and whatever you want to change on it. So here, something interesting that happens is uh, host-based card emulation can also allow something that was not possible earlier. It can allow two-way sustained communication. How you can do it is something, a little hacky kind of implementation. When you do get data, you get something back, and it has got a status word which says that the data was successfully sent. It's an OK status word. So what you can do is you can just ignore that fact, and you can ask for keep asking for more data. As long as the devices are close to each other, you can keep on running the get data commands, and you can keep on getting data. So that way, uh, uh, if your data is larger than 64 KB in size, you can run it through an iterator and fetch the whole data. Again, you can run another iterator for using your put data calls, and you can send data to the other device. So in this method, what we can do is actually you're not using the devices as a card or a reader. You're just using as two devices that are talking to each other. The channel will obviously be half duplex in nature, because at a time, 
uh, only data can go or come, but uh, when the ad when the whole communication is finished, you have actually been successfully done a two-way communication. You have sent data, you have got data. So finally, uh, this is just a diagram I wanted to show when I mentioned that there is a compatibility problem in NFC. You can see at the top layer are some of the implementations, the APIs, uh, the NDAF uh, is a protocol, uh, SNEP and LLC are the layers by which these are implemented. Uh, the green boxes are the types of cards that we have today. Uh, and finally, uh, the purple boxes at the bottom, they are showing the kind of hardware that we have today. So you see it's a very fragmented system, but still we can uh, make our way through it and uh, achieve something out of it. Uh, so uh, these are the current usages that NFC is used in. Uh, a lot of people think that NFC is used only in payments, but uh, uh, NFC is used like, I have this smartwatch, so I tap it to my phone and it gets paired. These kind of things are used. Uh, social network check-ins, ticketing, healthcare, automation, a lot of things are uh, being done. And there are a lot of fields, new fields also coming up which are using NFC. So uh, I'll talk about some of the limitations also. So it's a very nascent stage in industrial application. I mean, I am yet to see somewhere where NFC is using really widespread. I mean, other than tapping your ID card for your attendance at office or uh, something like payments, nothing else is big coming up. So let's hope something happens. Uh, secondly, again, due to the fragmentation at the hardware, the lib NFC library is uh, very fragmented. Uh, different devices have different implementations and uh, like I mentioned, some of the NXP semiconductor chips, they don't support the extended APDU, they don't support uh, host-based card emulation. These are the problems. So with that, I will be ending it. Uh, I think I have a typo. <laughs> Thank you.